Dates are useful in virtually any database, from task deadlines to meeting times to content publishing dates to birthdays. And with formulas, you can reference dates to calculate new dates and generate other useful insights. So, for example, you can calculate the days remaining until a task's deadline or the duration of an event or a person's age from that person's birthday. And formulas also allow you to format dates beyond Notion's limited native options. So let's explore the essential functions for working with dates in formulas. And if you haven't already, be sure to take a look at the formula fundamentals lesson first because many of those concepts will apply to this lesson. So remember that each value of a database property, including the values returned by formulas, is one of four data types. It can be a text string, it can be a number, it can be a Boolean, which is true or false, or it can be a date. And when you provide input values to formulas, whether literally or as property references, you must remain mindful of data types. You can only add a number to another number, and you can only concatenate a string with another string. A Boolean must be compared to another Boolean, and then dates also must be compared to dates. If you try to mix data types in unintended ways, you'll get a type mismatch error, which is the most common error and one that you'll certainly encounter in your work with formulas in Notion. And then moreover, the arguments of most functions must be a particular data type or at least matching data types. So the subtract function, for example, accepts two numbers, whereas the join function accepts strings. And then as you'll see, the date subtract function takes a date followed by a number followed by a string. And unlike these other data types, dates can't be entered literally within a Notion formula. You have three different methods of providing a new date to a formula. And the most common is going to be just choosing a date within a date property, which you can then reference within a formula. But you also have the now function, which we'll take a look at here in just a second. And that's a commonly used method of generating a date. And then we also have the from timestamp function, which is really infrequently used. It accepts a number, which it converts to a date. If you're curious about that, I mentioned it briefly in the formula fundamentals lesson, and you can also find it within my formula cheat sheet. So keeping mindful of data types, let's take a look at the essential date functions. So the first is going to be the now function. It accepts no arguments, and each time the now function is loaded, it returns the current date and time. So this is useful primarily as an input for other functions and formulas. So if we open up our formula property here and just type now with parentheses open and close and no arguments and then return it, you can see that for each item of the database, it's simply returning the current date and time. And then we have the start and end function. So when you choose a date within a date property, you have the opportunity to add an end date. And when you do that, it creates a date range. So what the start and end functions do is allow you to return just the starting date or the end date of that range. And that can be useful as a standalone value, such as the final deadline of a task or a project, or you can use it as an input for another formula. So within this deadline property here, we will return the last date of the date range. So that for both the start and end functions, they accept just one argument, and that's going to be the property containing the date range from which you want to pull the start or the end date. So in this case, that's going to be the dates property. So we'll enter that within the end function, close it out and submit. And you can see that our deadline property here is now returning only the end date of our full date range as the deadline for each task. And then you're sure to find the date between function incredibly useful. Among the most common uses of dates in formulas is to calculate the amount of time since a date 
or until a date. So when we calculate age, we're calculating the amount of time since the birthday. And when we calculate a number of days until a deadline, we're calculating the difference between that deadline and the current So the date between function takes three arguments. The first is going to be the date from which you want to subtract the second argument. So the second argument is going to be the date to subtract from the first date. And then the third argument of date between is going to be a text string. It's going to be the units in which you want to display the difference. So that's going to be lowercase and plural. It'll be years, months, days, or so forth. So we'll see that in these examples. To calculate age, what we'll do is we'll start our date between, open it up, and the first argument is going to be the date from which we want to subtract the second date. So in this case, we want to subtract the birthday from the current date. So we'll use the now function. And then the second argument is going to be the date to subtract from the first one. So this is going to be a reference to the birthday property. And then we want to return the result in years because we're talking about this person's age. So we'll enter years within a string, submit. So then in our tasks example, we want the days remaining until the future deadline. So in this case, we'll again start our date between open it up, and the first date here is going to be the deadline property. So we'll reference that, and then the second one is going to be now because we want to subtract the current date and time from that future deadline. And then we want to display this result in dates. And here we have the days remaining until each deadline. But you don't always have to use the now function. You can use any two dates as those first two arguments. So in the case of a date range, you can use the start and the end. So if we want to find the duration of each task here, or this could be a project, then we can use the date between function, open it up, and we'll use as the first argument the end of our date range. So we'll enter end and then we'll reference our dates property. And then for the second argument of date between, we want the start of our dates property. So we'll use our start function. And then we want to display the outcome of this in days. So we'll submit that and we have the duration of each date range here. And then the format date function is going to give you greater control over how you display your date. So when you choose a date within a date property, Notion gives you just a handful of options for how it's displayed. But with the format date function, you can display your dates in virtually any format that you might want. And the way that that works is that the first argument is going to be the date that you want to reformat. Typically, that'll be a reference to a date property. And then the second argument is a text string where you supply a format using the moment standard. And the moment standard offers virtually unlimited formatting options. And I'll link to a cheat sheet. But generally speaking, you can use Y's, M's, and D's in various combinations to specify how you want your date formatted. So two Y's, for example, will display a two-digit version of the year, whereas four Ys will display it with all four digits. And then three Ms will display an abbreviated version of the month. Four Ms will display the full month. And then two Ds will display a two-digit version of the day, whereas one D will display just a single digit. So we'll reformat the birthday here by using the format date function, and then we'll reference the birthday property. And then for our format, we will enter four Ys with a dash, two Ms, and then two Ds. Close it out, and you can see here that our birthday is now formatted in a way that is friendly to sorting. This is a format that I use often. Lastly, we have the date add and date subtract functions, which will allow you to add or subtract time from a date. And the way that these work is they take three 
arguments. The first one is going to be the starting date. The second one is going to be a number, that number representing what you want to add or subtract. And then the third argument is a text string representing the units for that number. And that works the same way as the units for the date between function. It's lowercase and plural, such as days, years, or months. So the amount that you subtract can be a literal value that you input into the formula directly, or it can be a reference to another property for each item. So in the case of trips, for example, we can calculate the return date by adding the duration of the trip in days to the departure date. So we'll click into our formula window here and we'll start our date add function. And the first argument is going to be the starting date. We'll reference the departure date. And then the second argument is what we want to add to that date. So in this case, it's going to reference the duration property. And then the third argument is the units that apply to that number that we're adding. In this case, the duration represents days. So we will close that out, submit, and you can see that we now have our automated return date property. So those are the most useful and commonly employed functions for working with dates in Notion. And if you hit any snags as you experiment with them, feel free to tweet at William Nutt.